Um, preparing and giving a lecture about architecture is, of course, a nice way to show uh, projects. But it's also a time we could dedicate to reflect about position we think important by doing architecture and perhaps also to understand our work. Um, by position, I do not mean any dogma or theory, but rather some themas which enable us to share with you what we consider doing to be doing when we do architecture, and to some extent, what could consist to have an idea in architecture. This is the first uh, quote by a French poet, quite uh, renowned, no, Paul Valéry. In his cahier, Paul Valéry had collected an incredible number of thoughts, around 30,000 pages, some kind of a think tank, by writing short and very precise aphorisms. Some of them are very useful for us as architects, and in more general view, point of view, his career reminds us also the core of our practice is deeply bound with the way we think. Architecture is indeed a thinking profession which is brought to anticipate some actions into the real. We are not doing things by ourselves. We are thinking so things could be done by others. The sentence here speaks about making choice, which is probably a very common action as uh, authors. This is we all know, but it also tells us the importance of memory uh, in our practice. So I don't think I have to translate, it's kind of an easy uh, sentence. As you probably already know, memory and space share a lot together. Francis Yates, a famous historian, in, his, in her book called The Art of Memory, explained us very well this strong relationship between memory and place. By looking back to history before the hegemony of writings, referring, for instance, to the art of rhetoric, when someone had to remember a long and complex discourse, he used most of the time an elaborate method of association between ideas, space and object, and this is what we called mnemonic system. Here you can actually see an illustration of this method showing different buildings and objects. To develop his thinking, the speaker literally walk in mind through different spaces and building where he was able to find objects and associate them with his rhetorical demonstration. So what Francis Yates learned to us is that thinking, thinking in, a general, in general is strongly related to metaphorical associations, conscious or unconscious. And I think metaphorical association are particularly relevant to explain our practice as architects. History of architecture gives us a fantastic re repertoire of situations where metaphorical associations occupy an important role. And this is perhaps another position I would like to explain today, the importance in, of history in our work not as any form of nostalgia, but rather as an incredible potential, a potential of existing conditions, a potential of new interpretations. And the images you see here are not to be understood as source of inspiration, but rather as potential of new interpretations. We really appreciate reference not for themselves, but rather to, for their value, their underline. They could somehow act as devices. Space and architecture do, don't, do not make sense for themselves. And in that sense, I really consider architecture very close to the way we, understood, we understand and enjoy music as a continuous movement of interpretation, appropriation, 
I see the architect position as an interpret, as we used to do in, or to call it in music. So the, the discussion of, of what is modern, of what is not, what is classical or what is not, is in that sense not really relevant anymore. Here are some snapshots taken from a famous movie of Godard, which is called Bande à part. And standing for this position, in other words, one who could say classical was modern at its time, and modern would ultimately be classical. So since history is definitely available for us, I do think it produced what we could call performative forms, which not only means that each history produced a repertoire of typologies, but moreover a repertoire of different conditions we could in a very literal way play or manipulate. And I'm really interested to reach architectural issues by other means than architecture in itself. So, here is the first project, which could probably show better what I meant before by interpretations and performative forms. The project is a competition we actually lost a few years ago and was dedicated to a mobile theater for a, a company theater. And they wanted a mobile installation so they could easily travel through different places in Europe. So the shows they produce are actually in between theater performance and street art performance. So the relationship with the public space was quite important. And that was the main condition of our proposal, theater which could open to its near surroundings. Here you can see the ground floor plan showing the impact of the main structure, reduced to its minimum four elevators at the middle of each side of the building. These schemes allowed, of course, a maximum polyvalence inside the building, so the show could easily transform to adopt different configurations. Following, for instance, the relationship with the company wanted to set up with the current context or the performance in itself. Surrounding the building, we imagine a double layer uh, of curtains that could actually fill uh, all the equipments. This plan shows in a more theoretical uh, situation, illustration, different relationship the building could propose to the city. Here's the main uh, section. The building has to be mounted and assembled on, on the site. The main aluminum structure was built directly at the ground floor and then lifted up as a single element at the required heights. Since the show could be very different from each other's, as well as the context, the, eleva the elevators were able to offer various heights and atmospheres. Perhaps one of the main goals of architecture beyond its utilitas would also be about staging. Staging life, staging people, but also staging generic, generic and specific conditions. I do believe indeed that architecture is about the meeting of a site and a function, a certain situation with certain activities, but we all know that's not enough to do architecture. Here are some examples of what I mean by staging staging cities prior to architecture, staging public space, staging structure and infrastructure. And this is a particular thema which is very important in a work, the structure as architect, since I think the structure is not only the core of the building, the choice of a structural system rather than another one is very important question and we like, for instance, to address this issue with our clients because it is abstract enough to keep talking about basic conditions, basic mot motivations, and at the same time, it addresses very precise issues like skills or proportions. Staging 
pri private, so to some extent, intimacy. And of course, staging relationship between inside and outside. But also staging broader issue like landscape territories. This is a side plan of another project uh, we are currently building. It is a side plan showing uh, the topography, which is the main feature of uh, the site. And it's a very nice site uh, in Belgium. It's a city called Spa, quite famous for the water. And as you probably see here, the topography was one of the main character. Uh, current activities are actually organized following topography in different horizontal plateaux. One of the plateaux is actually the center of the site, and it's uh, staging a listed building, a castle from the end of the uh, 19th century. It's uh, right there. So the building sits next to the castle and would actually define some sort of a new place. The idea was to make an architectural intervention which would speak about this topographic, topographical condition, but also to reinforce the symbolic and historical center of the site. Rather than to compete with the existing, the building acts as a complementary of the castle. In that sense, we also provide a direct connection to the existing building. So both buildings would actually share common activities, show uh, common grounds. Here's a cross section showing both the existing and the new building. It is as if the building, the old one, literally sit on top of the new one. And the building is uh, ultimately to be read as an infrastructure. This was probably the main issue of the project, prior to, architect to be architectural. The project was a competition we won five or six years ago, and we finally get the chance now to build it. Although the, co the competition asked uh, initially to different intervention, we decided to go for one building, which would combine all the program under the same roof, under a single building. It is very important for us to be able to actually reformulate the initial demand of the client. To some extent, this is a necessity, I think, for architects. Doing a project is, of course, always kind of a discovery. So this is the main plan. So the new building is organized around the mid patio. And we will have a large external covered area to host actually public and create covered connections with all activities. Talking about materials, it was quite obvious we would use in situ concrete for the entire building, walls and floors. Regarding its situation, half sunken in the landscape, it acts as a physical continuity with the castle. We chose to be monolithic by developing with concrete manufacturers an isolated concrete composed out of what we called expanded glass. We like it not only because of architectural interest, but moreover because of concrete address again this issue of being infrastructural. So this is expanded glass, which is not what some other uh, called used uh, like clay, expanded clay, it's more specific. There are aggregates of recycled crushed glass agglomerated together by eating them. So the building is somehow very primitive. It is almost only about structural work. In this respect, there was no very specific detail for the construction of the wall and floors. And here's the main section through a wall showing the deepness of the walls, but also how we did the connections with the windows. And then we have the roof, much more complex, although very simple in its shape. It is built out of a prefabricated steel profile and mounted on the site. 
And since the structure, as you probably saw in the, in the plan, is regular in plan but irregular regarding the, its supports and spans, we compensate actually the unbalance by working on thickness of the, those steel profiles. Here are some of the drawing we produce in order to communicate with the structural, the structural principle with the general contractor. These drawings show specifically also how we articulate uh, inside and uh, outside. This is a view like building site. As a public building, part of the budget is dedicated for art intervention. And we propose to work with a textile designer. They manage actually to convince the client to work on a very big curtain, which would be installed at the patio. And here are some tests regarding colors, density. And this is kind of a mock-up. And this is actually the face of the building looking from the plinths uh, of the castle. Another position about architecture I wanted to share with you today it would be about status. I think architects, uh, as an architect, we have, in, we have indeed the opportunity to define or redefine through space relationship between people and things by creating hierarchies, as small they could be. But I also think our main opportunity would be to work about status of things, not only forms. And this is a quote, I don't know if I have to translate it, it's kind of simple to understand, I think, of a French director, uh, Robert Bresson, which is actually something I really appreciate in the work we do, but also in my teaching at the university. And this was perhaps the main starting point of our research we did about making projects we called urban portraits. We keep going at the office without any precise agenda, no client, and I think this is quite important to have those kind of projects. This also somehow what we propose to do uh, this week at the Porto Academy. We said we could work on the identity of some urban conditions here in Paris, for instance, not necessarily by doing projects as we used to do as architects, but rather by working by default. So we decide to reveal some urban conditions by taking out some fragments. This work was, of course, not meant to be any proposal or any utopia. It simply reminds us a project is not necessarily making a proposal. It somehow relies on the critical viewpoint we formulate about existing things. And this is another image of Brussels. And the last one about another city in Belgium called Liège. The work has been shown a few years ago in Brussels. And we were actually very happy to see the public success of this exhibition. People literally enter the picture and start then their own story about uh, the work. This work was obviously also the pretext to speak about how we could work with images, not as illustrations of process, more like a process. Illustration, which is unfortunately most of the case when we look at architectural renderings today. So more, more as a thinking methodology, being part of the design process and not coming at the end as an illustration more or less accurate to a project. Thinking with image, not a side of them. And here's what I meant by working with images. We call them in the office montage instead of collage because they have kind of a movie-like characters we quite like. Choosing an image, saying something, choosing another one, saying something else, and then putting them together to create new conditions or new situations. We call this research phase uh, ideality. 
The project is not depending yet on forms, no program, no precise site. It approached slowly these conditions by working with reference images. So since working about status is definitely prior to any formalistic uh, uh, choices, I think it is also a very useful method to work with students. It allows to question quite fundamental aspect of architecture, the relationship between forms and content, for instance. And here is a series of documents, uh, plans, and section we gave for starting point of a short exercise to first year studio at our school. We actually asked the student to pick one of them and start to build their own scenario about a certain theme they had discovered by reading the drawing, since they do not know anything about this source, their situation, their size, or anything else. It is, of course, quite unexpected, the project they came up. Here is a work, among other, where the source document was a famous unbuilt project for a private house by Ms. Van der Hoe, the brick country house. Parallel to build the scenario by writing a brief novel, we asked the student to redraw the document as a first understanding of the theme they wanted to work with. At the left side, the existing drawing, and at the right side, the, the new one. And here is their interpretation. Since the building is obviously composed out of walls, they decide to play with this element as the main theme of their proposal. The building is not a house anymore. It's a border inspection post between three fictive countries. Certain walls contain program, others can move according to political situations between countries. Form stays, content changes. And this is actually the model they produce. And then at the end of the exercise, we even asked them to situate the project, and here's their proposal. This is, of course, the completely opposite process we were used to do, but finding at the end of the process the right side is obviously also help us help them to formulate their main issues. As I told you before, the project is perhaps not about inventing things. It has never been done before, which is obviously the motto of some architects today, but much more about building new kind of relationship between pre-existing conditions. And here is again a quote from Robert Bresson. This is a project talking a bit about this issue, creating, creating new kind of relationship between existing conditions. It is a competition about the museum in Belgium. The, building, the museum has to be reloc relocated into an existing listed building, and the collection was large enough to consider a quite consistent extension besides the existing building. As you probably see in this image, we propose to work with two complementary archetypes as the main extension for the existing building, a gallery space and an enclosed garden. Here's the ground floor, showing the different spaces, the different parts, the old one at the bottom part and the new one at the upper left. Renovation and extension, so at some point it would have been difficult to identify their difference, although they proceed to almost opposite experience. So the linear exhibition gallery made sense since the existing building consists of a composition made of typical enfilade rooms. So we had finally three different types of conditions of space but also the way to visit the museum, enfilade, the gallery, and the interior garden. And at the right side, you, you find what we call uh, Pinacotech. This is the main section. Since the museum had a very large number of pieces, mainly drawings and paintings by dimensional works, we actually proposed a different way to stock them. 
We imagine we, it could be nice if the visitor would have access at some moment to the entire memory of the museum, its storage. So instead of large underground and in inaccessible floors, we actually use another typology to expose and stock in a very efficient way their storage. This is what we called the Pinacotec. We found the technical stage of a traditional theater could suit very well to this idea. So we produce almost an identical system consisting of mobile borders. And the following section shows actually the main relationship between this element, the gallery space, and the garden. Again, again very different space condition uh, working together. This is an image of what we had in, in mind at, the, at that time. So I already told you, I really consider the architect as an interpret. Interpret of forms, typologies, but also interpret of signs. If architecture is, sum of, is a sum of condition, it's also a set of signs. So architect would be also responsible to create new organizations of signs and create, in that extent, new semantics. Signs subject to our own personal understanding, but also in a broader way to our collective memory. Here is another project, a competition we won last year, and we hope we are struggling to be able to build it now. It is about a new community center in Belgium in a very, very small village. Uh, the village is around 500 people, but they have a basilica, kind of a huge building in this, in this um, uh, village, and it is a very important place for pilgrimage. So the site for the new building is located just next to this uh, landscape element, a long canal. And the region is a really fantastic region. It's composed out of uh, small valleys. This is actually a geological uh, drawing of this region. And it's still a very rural, rural place. And the, communi the community decided actually to build a new building for polyvalent uh, uses to shelter their main activities, but also to some kind of showcase their products and their activities. We propose a very simple plan, a long building parallel to the canal. And because of its required polyvalence, the building has almost no specific program beside the main kitchen and some facility. So we organize the activities in a sequence of different spaces, outside and inside, covered by a single roof structure. The resulting plan is some kind of an enfilade of open space, putting next to each other. Since the ground was very bad for using traditional foundation, because of the nearby water, we decide actually to reduce the support by working with structural rooms. You also previously say, saw this in the, in the ground floor plan. But we also brought to the roof all the technical facilities in order to avoid any basement level. This is the main longitudinal uh, section. So we also decide the roof structure would actually follow the main direction of the site, the main direction of the territory. Structure seems at first viewpoint completely inefficient, inefficient regarding traditional way of spanning space, but it turns to be quite logical regarding the ground quality of the site. Here is a section where we study the use of uh, prefabricated concrete beams. But we might also go for a vaulted built, uh, ceiling built by using in situ concrete. My last point would be about um, archetypes. Archetypes interest us in the sense they constitute models, models for potential interpretation and transformation again. 
And this is obviously linked to the idea of repertoire I showed you before at the beginning of this lecture. Archetypes enable you again to travel through history. History of paintings, history of architecture, but also more recently history of photography. And this is a work on the, on the, the right side of Jeff Wall, you probably also know. So archetypes helps us to another understanding of what we called modernity. Modernity is not meant to be a clear break between visions of the past, although paradigm changes. I believe modernity is much more to be understood as a continuity. And I do not think that Jeff Wall took Edouard Manet as one of its, its main archetypes by coincidence. Manet, the so-called uh, father of the European modern painting. This is again a montage we did for a project during uh, studies. The project is about a private residence in the suburb of Brussels for a couple who wanted to build a house for a weekend. There are, of course, about first intentions, idealities. I would like now to show you our first complete buildings, which is actually very modest. It's a, this is a picture of the site. It's in Brussels, in a very dense neighborhood at the middle, at the middle of a typical urban block. The initial brief asked us to create a small public space, somehow the same typology that other pocket parks we can find in Brussels. And the client asked us initially to implement a new equipment in this space, which was meant to be a, long, a low energy pavilion. The new building was around 100 square meters. And since its size was extremely modest, it was immediately clear for us it didn't really make sense to respond to that uh, question. So this is the situation, I think you see the square there showing the site. Situation is in between, the site is in between two different uh, situations, the main plaza at the, the right side and the back street at the left side. So we went actually to the school and asked them if they would be interested to share interest for this project, the school which is right behind, right, right uh, next to the, the, the site. And it happens that by walking through the existing building, the school found out we could e quite easily share space within this building and we could spare some rooms to implement their low energy pavilions. And this is actually the main story for this project, perhaps the most, most important pro, uh, uh, story. The rest was perhaps much easier to do, although the project started like seven years ago. We actually wanted to offer the city a very stable moment in this quite weird context, a moment of neutrality. Here's the side plan again, showing the structure. Only peripheral wo existing walls and four columns, actually, with some trees. Since the status changed from a leftover dead end site to a small public space and a potential new entrance to the school, we decided to somehow play with this kind of ambiguity, being at the same time open because of, of its passing character, but also closed because of uh, the strong definition of the limits. And here's the pl uh, plan of the garden. It's kind of a weird space. It's not really about a court, nor a patio, nor a park. It has perhaps more to do with a garden, some kind of uh, open air uh, room. few image of the construction. This is an image showing the first stage of the building site. So everything was done in situ. 
another building phase. Here the scaffolding works and the mounting of the platforms, which would receive later the form works on top. So the entire roof was poured in one phase from the very early morning until the end of the day. The gardens does not have an, any equipment. It was meant to be as polyvalent as possible. And here's, for instance, the lecture of our structural engineer he did uh, last summer. But the project is, of course, also about primitive elements of architecture, walls, columns, and roof. A few months ago, the client asked us to continue the project. We do not have a precise idea of what we would do, but this is the first very abstract document we are working with. And we really appreciate actually continue working on this project. We are able to take care about the project in a longer uh, term. This is the last uh, image. Again, another personal interpretation of the project. Thank you for listening.